Show it real quick. This is where one of my rows were, my tomatoes. You can see that there's no weeds where the plants were. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Buckeye Gardener Channel. It is October 5th here in Ohio, and you can see in the background some of the leaves are starting to change already. Uh, fall is officially here. That's really nice this week. It's been like 80 degrees all week. Uh, been incredibly warm for October. It's going to change here. I think Sunday's only high of 50, so it's going to drop real fast. But I'm going to finish tearing the garden down today. I want to show you uh, the results of the tomato with the Florida weave. You still see the plants in there. Um, I've got everything else tore out right now. Uh, the peppers, I will leave. You can see they're producing pretty good. I got some hot pepper mustard I'm gonna make here next week or two. And I've got some purple hall peas up on the top end. We'll leave them. I'm gonna get the tomatoes tore out today, get everything tilled up, and get some cover crop in. And I'm gonna work on a little garlic bed too over here. I'm gonna put a new raised bed in, put some garlic in, and asparagus in another bed. So uh, I might show that in another video, but I'm gonna work on that today while it's nice out. So come with me. Let me show you how these tomatoes did this year. Okay, so this is what's left of my tomato plants. Uh, like these things have been done for a couple weeks. I just haven't had time to get them out of here. Uh, you can see the Florida weave down here on these celebrities did really good holding them up. You can see there's still tomatoes on there. Now, they're not real good this time of year. They just don't have the flavor they did earlier in the year. And uh, we've did all we're going to do with them. We've made sauce, sauce, and we've ate so many fresh. So we're going to let them go. But uh, I'll cut the plants out today and get this tilled up, get some rye planted in for a cover crop this year. Uh, these lemon boys did good. You can see how tall they got. That was that one there in the middle was... Uh, chocolate pear so it was a freebie it was good uh we just didn't eat that many of them i feel like i kind of forgot about it all year the cherry tomatoes were on the other end they did good you can see how tall they got i'll show you a cherry tomato plant got up the house it's one of the sun sugars it's their vines are like 14 foot long it grew five foot up the cage five foot down the outside of the cage and like three feet across the ground and they are still produced and i ate some yesterday so there's the results you saw in the other videos and i put them up the florida weave on the shorter determinate tomatoes and then all the indeterminates how tall they got in those cages all right let's go show you the easiest way i found to take these cages down right now if you try to rip a cage off and pull the plant out the plant will break off in it and i've found over the years it's easier to come in here cut the tops of these off wherever they're hanging out of the cage And then when you pull the cage up and leave the plant there, and then you just cut the plant off the ground level. You see how tall these things got. That one there's seven, seven and a half foot. Well, you can't really see in the camera there, but it's a foot and a half taller than me. We got to tear these off. Some of these are still good, but I've got a bunch of these up at the house that we've been eating on. Wherever they're hanging over, though, cut them out that way. You're not fighting them when you pull it up out of there. All right, and then when I put these up, all I did was tie a couple pieces of twine around these pieces of rebar. So we'll cut them off. Use the old knife for that, that way. The one with the disposable razor blade, that way you cut the metal, it doesn't ruin your good knife. And then, pull the cage up off. The plant stays right there, there's the cage. Pull the stake out. And then, I'm just gonna cut the plant off and leave the root there. When I till the garden up, I'll till the roots in. And then we'll put all these in the pile and get those out. You don't wanna till those in because they will get wrapped up in your uh, tiller blades. I've did that before and it's terrible. So that's how we'll do. We'll get down through here and cut these out. I'll show you the weave too. I take it down. It's pretty simple, but uh, it comes out pretty easy. Easier than it goes up. So I'll show you that here in a minute. All right, I got a quick little project this year. Um, so this is where I store my tomato cages. The garden's right here above it, this kind of down over the hill. Can't see it from the road, and it uh, doesn't look as bad. So I just stack them all up down here in the winter. You can see I've got three or four stacked here from last year still, but they sit on the ground, and they rust, and then the weeds grow up in them. It's kind of a pain. I sprayed this there a while back. That way, um, get all the grass killed off of it. makes it easier. Uh, I got some two-by-fours I'm going to slap together this year. Get them up off the ground, and then I got some of this rebar using the garden just on the ends to keep it from rolling away. I was gonna drive them down on the inside. So let me clean this up here. I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that real quick. All right, so there's what I did. I just took uh, three two by fours, cut one in half to make the short pieces here on the sides, and then uh, just screwed them together with some deck screws, laid it down there. I wanted to stain it, but I didn't have time, and uh, I've run out of stain, so. It'll be good for now. I drove a couple pieces of rebar in to stack them up. There's 18 cages stacked up in there. And I got one more at the house with that uh, cherry tomato plant at the house. But you can see that keeps them up off the ground. Keep them a little drier this year. These things were, it was a rusted roll of wire when I got it. I've had it for six years now. So it's holding up all right. But uh, 
try to make them last as long as I can. A roll of it's getting expensive now, so they ought to last a long time up like this. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to take my Florida weave down. And so with this Florida weave, this white string here, you don't wanna leave any of this in your garden. That's not, this won't decompose. You can use a uh, string that'll decompose and uh, like jute or some kind of twine. Uh, this works the best though, because it doesn't stretch at all and holds up all summer. But you don't wanna leave any of that in your garden. So what I'm gonna do here, on the ends I've got it. She got a sharper knife today. We're just gonna cut the ends. Now you can cut the plants off first with loppers and then roll all this up, but I'm gonna burn the tomatoes separate. And I come down here to this post and we'll cut it. You can see it's falling over there. All right, I'm gonna show you how I do this real quick. I cut these out. I started to video it, my uh, video shut off on the first set. So I've already cut it, but where I have it tied on my teeth post on the ends, I just take my knife, run down the inside, cut that all off on both sides, and then I'll grab this piece of rebar here in the middle that I had brace where it's wrapped around and pull that string right out. So let me show you real quick. Let me cut this outside down here. get all of them grab this rebar let's throw that one into some rock and as you pull that out the string will all come right with it out of the plants there you go now you get rid of the string you don't want to leave a string in your garden it will not decompose and it'll get wrapped up your tiller tines so I make sure I get all this out. But you see right there, I've got all one bowl. I got one bowl off the other side. So we'll get rid of that. Cut these plants off, throw them in with the other ones. Here's a quick tip for pulling T-posts. If you get them in the ground real hard, or if you got a lot of rock around your garden or whatever like I do, or even on the farm, take your T-post driver and put it on an angle and catch one of these little tabs right here. Keep a little bit of weight on it there and pull the post to you. And it'll pull right up out of the ground and loosen it up. Makes it a lot easier than trying to pull them. Like I said, I, I drove these in the rock. This one wasn't too bad. The first one down there was tight. I did that and it came right out. So give that a try if you ever get one stuck. Just wanted to show you real quick. This is where one of my rows were, my tomatoes. You can see that there's no weeds where the plants were. Now there's some in the walkways on each side. I never got anything put on there. But if you remember my other videos, I put down newspaper and grass clippings. You can see them layered right here. Just one layer of newspaper and then some grass clippings on top and that kept all them weeds from growing through that newspaper and it kept moisture down in there about all summer now we haven't had any rain here i think we have 0.7 inches the whole month of september today's october 5th so it is dry 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 but the plants are done anyway but uh you can see that i really work keep the weeds down in both rows so give that a try sometime if you want to keep the weeds out and keep the moisture in there all right, got her all tilled up. I'm ready to throw some rye on for a cover crop this winter. I'll go grab that and real quick. I'm going to show you my pepper plants for the year. You see they were really productive. These are the Hungarian uh, hot wax here. There's some Santa Fe's there. Jalapenos did really good. Bell peppers did good. They all did really good. So uh, we're going to leave them in here until it frosts. We're not supposed to have frost for another couple weeks, it looks like. It's going to get down to 40 here this weekend a couple times, but we shouldn't get any frost out of it. So... Hopefully next week I get harvested what I got here. We'll make a big batch of hot pepper mustard and I'll make a video on that. All right, and over here I slapped together a couple of four by eight foot beds um, where I got my garlic and stuff in my other videos. I showed you that and the asparagus. There wasn't really enough room for all the garlic I want to plant or the asparagus. I can't have room to add any there. So I added a couple of beds here off to the side of the garden. Uh, get some dirt and put in them here. I kind of leveled them up. Picked the driest day of the year to try to break ground with a tiller, but it worked. You see there's lots of rocks in there. Pick them out. We'll get some dirt in there and I'll show you when I plant them. I'm going to show you how to harvest the asparagus seeds I have on my asparagus in another video here. I did this uh, a couple years ago and it worked pretty good. So we'll harvest some of those and replant them in here. Get some free aspar uh, asparagus plants going. It'll take them a couple years when you start from seed, but it'll be worth it in the end. All right, so that's pretty much a wrap for the year. Uh, I'll do a couple more videos here. Like I said, hot pepper mustard video I'll do. I'll show you how I harvest the seeds from the asparagus. I'll show you when I plant those and my garlic and stuff here in a few weeks, but for the main garden itself, that's pretty much it. So it was a really productive year. I was pretty happy with everything. The weeds got a little bit out of control, but it was a pretty wet summer too. It's wetter than we normally have here in Ohio. So 
like I said, we're about two weeks from frost, it looks like, at least. So I want those peppers go as long as I can. Uh, last year, I covered them up the end of September. We had an early frost last year, and uh, I covered them up with some sheets a couple nights. They made it all the way till November before it frosted again, and they produced really good in October. They like the fall weather. The plants are good and established, and they really make lots of fruits. So I'll leave them in there as long as I can. And uh, the purple hall peas, probably about next week or so, I see some of them's getting ready to start changing. So they're about ready to harvest, too. Uh, I tried them last year. I liked them. They were pretty good. So... That's all I got left in the big garden. I'm gonna grab the uh, rye and throw on there for a cover crop. I got a little bit of fertilizer left in the bag. I might just throw a little bit on there too. Just kind of use that bag up. It's not sitting around all winter. There's only probably five pounds left, so it ain't that big a deal. But uh, we'll do that real quick and uh, stay tuned. I'll show you the other videos. Like I said, that hot pepper mustard is a really good video. I might do some jalapeno dust. I did some last year where I smoked the jalapenos and dehydrate them and grind them up. It's really good too. So uh, make sure you uh, stay tuned for some other videos. And thanks for watching.